Hi friends, Paul Caminiti here with the Institute for Bible Reading and also one of the creators of Immerse, the Bible Reading Experience. Here to first thank you for your interest in Immerse and to answer any questions about launching Immerse in a way that it's going to really take off. We get contacted by church leaders regularly. They're intrigued by Immerse and they're wondering are there keys or their best practices for launching Immerse successfully. And you know, the good news is, is that there are churches that are hitting it out of the park. And you know, they're seeing revival-like things in their churches. And in this video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually give you a profile of what those churches and what those leaders look like. So for starters, you know, the number one key by far are leaders who catch the immersed vision really deep in their bones. They're deeply convicted that Bible illiteracy is a massive problem. And if we could somehow crack that nut, a lot of our other thorny issues would disappear. They've also bought into what I would call the uniqueness of the Immerse experience. They get it that Immerse isn't just the next you know, program to come down the pike. Instead, they understand that Immerse represents a major paradigm shift in the way churches engage the Bible. So what is it specifically that they've grasped about Immerse that's, that's unique and sets it apart? The first thing is that Immerse is a reading Bible versus a reference Bible. And they understand that by removing chapters and verses, outlines, complex note systems, these aren't just cosmetic changes. We've given the Bible an unmakeover and it has fundamentally and positively change the reading experience. And the end result, and I love to share this, is people are loving their Bibles again. So for fun, we took a famous literary work and we laid over the top of it kind of a reference Bible framework so that we could demonstrate the impact of the format. Format matters. So, you know, we're not trying to disparage reference Bibles. They serve a huge an important purpose. I've created numerous ones. But what I want us to think about is that for 400 years, reading Bibles weren't even available. But now uh, reading Bibles like Immerse are being birthed. And I'm happy to report that visionary leaders are saying a big yes to this uh, fresh innovation for themselves and for their congregations. Another key feature of Immerse that uh, visionary leaders are embracing is that Immerse is a book club versus a Bible study. They understand that there really is a night and day difference between book club conversations and Bible study conversations. There's a world of difference between a Bible study question, for example, like, how many times does Jesus refer to himself as the bread of life in John 6? Versus, you know, the open-ended, immerse book club question like, what stood out to you in this week's reading? The one is a question that's going to invite a parrot-like response, and the other one's going to break the conversation wide open into more nuanced, honest, and a robust conversation. Now, it's been very exciting and honestly very rewarding to hear reports coming in from these vision-led churches. There's a 12-year-old church plant in the Chicago area, and they invited us to come and debrief with them after their experience. And what they shared was that engaging the Bible in this fresh way was the most significant thing that they've ever done in the life of their church. There's a church in Dallas, and you know, they do a, a whole church campaign every, every single year, and immerse uh, drew double the number of participants of any previous campaign. And people began spontaneously inviting their unchurched neighbors to immerse book clubs, neighbors that would never come to a Bible study, and they came. And they wrote letters to the pastor thanking the church and wondering when the next uh, immerse book club uh, was starting. We've studied churches where immerse has been a total game changer. And it almost always begins with visionary leaders who understand that Immerse isn't just another Bible study slightly tweaked. Immerse is, as one pastor expressed it, 
a revolution. So I'm encouraging you to do some of that private work, to let the vision wash over you before you publicly come and sell the idea to your congregation. There is a short list of best practices from highly successful immersed churches, and uh, we'll, we'll jump into those. First of all, uh, they launch Immerse as whole church campaigns. They treat Immerse like a varsity sport. Uh, understand that we designed Immerse to be an all-in experience, starting with the New Living Translation, which is translated at a sixth grade reading level. And you know, because we wanted no families left behind, we created a family guide for elementary age children that's just been hugely popular. Immerse is, is also ideal for people who are new to the faith, or maybe even people who are, are pre-leavers. I think those of us that have been in the game for a very long time sometimes forget uh, how intimidating it is for somebody who's unfamiliar with the church subculture. They join a Bible study. Uh, they don't even know the order of the books of the Bible, and then people start casually throwing around Bible references. I've personally had people tell me that their first Bible study experience was painful and that it left them feeling stupid. But with Immerse, uh, they have a text that looks familiar, it doesn't look foreign, and when they are ready to contribute, they can simply say something like this. I was really interested in Jesus' statement on page 45 in, in the fifth paragraph. Because Immerse is so inviting, uh, be prepared for people who aren't currently in small groups who will want to join up. We frankly were surprised by this. And oftentimes what churches will do is they'll invite these groups to come to the church on a weeknight. They'll have them sit around uh, round tables, probably led by an experienced facilitator, maybe even a staff member. The key, of course, is not to preach, simply to welcome, set up the conversation, and then, uh, you know, turn the people loose. You know, over and over, we're hearing that maybe Immerse's greatest challenge is trying to get people to come back at the end of the evening so that you can end on time. Number two. Take the lead in promoting Immerse. Begin by gathering your staff in advance to share the big Immerse vision. Request that they hit the pause button on any other conflicting initiatives. Your church is getting ready to embark on something that has the potential to reorient Bible reading habits for decades to come. Focus is key. And of course, you'll want to feature Immerse in a prominent place on your website, Facebook page, etc. Set your communications team loose to develop creative ways of keeping Immerse top of mind throughout the week. And you know, when the lights finally come on and it's time to share the big Immerse vision with your congregation, don't shortchange this. Take a chunk of time in the Sunday gathering to give them a robust uh, invitation and tutorial into the Immerse Bible and uh, the differences in the joy of book clubs. Number three, take advantage of all the wonderful Immerse turnkey tools. There's a series of guides. There's a leader's guide for you and your uh, leadership team that you've invited to lead Immerse. There's a host guide for the Immerse facilitators to help them sort through the differences between being a facilitator and a Bible teacher. And of course, there's a great family guide for young families. You know, in addition, we are really thrilled to announce that we created a brand new audio uh, Immerse Bible. Uh, it's free, it's downloadable to all of your participants. It's ideal for uh, commuters, for exercisers, and of course for audio learners. It's interesting, we've had more than one church leader who has shared with us that the audio Bible kept men in the game. Finally, we created weekly animated videos. Think of them as trailers for what the group will be reading the next week. And oftentimes groups will end with them as a way of wrapping up their meeting and getting people jazzed for the next week. And then of course, there are ebook editions which are available through your uh, traditional ebook suppliers. Number four, 
Here's a bold one. Preach through Immerse. You know, when we created Immerse, we created it with the assumption that we would be partnering with highly skilled and creative leaders who would adopt Immerse to their own style. And, and frankly, we've not been disappointed. You'll simply need to decide, am I gonna use that sermon to introduce the week's topic, or am I gonna use it as a follow-up? And you know, to our delight, reports are coming in now of unique partnerships that are developing between the pulpit and the pew. So the preaching is still crucial, but the preacher is being perceived a little differently. Less as the sage from the stage and a little bit more as the guide on the side. And, you know, fun fact, we're hearing reports uh, from preachers that their congregations are telling them that their preaching is getting better. Consider developing another key partnership. This one with your Immerse hosts. Create a feedback loop where they can share key conversations and big questions that are surfacing in their groups. This will help inform your sermon preparation. Number five, plan a three-year strategy for all six Immerse volumes. You know, why not? Why not the whole church through the whole Bible? What kind of impact would that make on your congregation? You know, the genius of Immerse is six manageable units. Uh, you know, a while back, I was having lunch at a restaurant and I happened to have an Immerse volume with me and, and just kind of on a whim, I asked my waitress if she thought that she could read this particular volume in eight weeks. And I'll never forget her response. She looked at me with disdain and she said, heck, I could read that this weekend. Sometimes I think we sell our congregants short. Sometimes I fear that our congregations have been bamboozled into believing that the Bible really is this impossibly long book. And there's this fascinating uh, survey that just came out where lay people were asked how long they thought it would take to listen to the entire Bible. You know what they said? They thought over a thousand hours. Here's the truth, 80 hours. 80 hours for the whole Bible. Binge watching Friends takes 87 hours. The Office is 99 hours and 30 minutes. Harry Potter is 20% longer than the Bible. So absolutely doable for you to take your congregation on two eight-week modules every single year. And in three years, your whole congregation will have read the whole Bible in community. Best practice number six, make room for the Spirit to guide. I know that may sound a bit amorphous, but churches are reporting to us that the Spirit is working in unusual ways. We're hearing reports of the Spirit moving in whole cities, where cities are coming together and churches saying, let's have an ecumenical um, experience around the Word. I loved this invitation from an organization led by some young adults who have a vision for virtual immerse groups where people from different religious persuasions and ethnicities would come together around a whole new and interesting conversation. The Spirit who gifted us with the scriptures and who is no doubt grieved that the Bible has not been given a, a central place in our Christian faith, seems to be willing to meet us halfway as we seriously attempt to give the Bible its due. So ask the Spirit to guide you in your particular context. As we wrap up, I want to say a word of thanks to our amazing publishing partner, Tyndale. Uh, to order in bulk, you can order directly from the Immerse site, and uh, you'll receive generous discounts starting at 10 copies or more. So visit us at the Immerse website at immersebible.com. If you want to know more about the Institute, find us at the Institute for Bible Reading .org. Don't hesitate to call us and uh, connect with us. Thank you so much, and welcome to the movement.